Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be going over minimap tactics in Battlefield 4. How to look at the minimap, when to look at the minimap, and what you should be looking for specifically on the minimap. Now what a lot of people don't know is you can actually customize your minimap quite extensively. Currently I have mine set to 150% of the normal size, and I also have it set to 50 meter zoom in by uh, default. And this basically sets up my minimap so it's very good for infantry gameplay. It's large, I can see a lot of detail on it, and it's also zoomed in to 50 meters around me. This means if somebody's close by and they're spotted, I'll have a pretty good idea of exactly where they are on that minimap. If it's zoomed out, you kind of know what direction they're in, but you're not necessarily sure what object they might be hiding behind. Now, one of the most valuable things to learn about how the minimap functions is how our target spotted. This helps you understand if you're spotted on the minimap also. You'll see here that I'm actually not using the Q button or the spot button to find my target. As long as my crosshair is near my target, it'll actually spot them on on the minimap for everyone to see. So even without hitting the spot button, you're already providing intel for your teammates whether you wanted to or not. Keep this in mind as well, if somebody is shooting in your general direction, that means they've spotted you momentarily for their entire team, even if they didn't use the Q button. Now I've spotted this player and we can watch them run away out of my line of sight and see just how long they're actually spotted for. Obviously spotting somebody with the spot mechanic is much more useful than just aiming in the general direction. You'll also get bonus points if your teammate kill somebody that you've spotted. Now what if somebody's out of your line of sight but they're shooting an unsuppressed weapon? Well, it pops them up on the minimap for a fraction of a second. However, if they shoot that weapon a lot or they're burst firing it, it basically gives you an updated position on them pretty frequently so it's very easy to locate your enemy if they're shooting their weapon frequently. It's going to be very easy to pinpoint somebody with a machine gun or a full auto weapon. A little bit trickier with snipers so you really got to be paying attention to your minimap to catch that bolt action shot. And if somebody is using a suppressed weapon, they will not show up on the minimap at all, making suppression extremely valuable in this game. Obviously, the trade-off is that you lose a huge amount of your muzzle velocity, so it reduces your ranged effectiveness. All right, now how about things to look for on the minimap? Right there, you can actually see a red triangle engaging my green triangle teammate. Now, if you didn't catch that while you were in action, say you're shooting at somebody, you can still be tipped off. For example, I can see my dead teammate icon on the minimap because I'm a medic, and it shows me that revive icon there. So I know somebody nearby killed him. This is especially useful when somebody's running around with a suppressed weapon killing your teammates. You can see your teammates dying on the minimap, but you won't necessarily see the enemy. It'll at least let you know what area the person with the suppressed weapon is probably operating. Now, most of the time, I'd say about 80% of the time I'm playing this game, my actions are dictated by what I see on the minimap. I went all the way out here because I was hunting down people that were popping up on the minimap, either from my teammates spotting them or them just being exposed from fire their weapons. This is something that I am constantly looking at and one good rule of thumb and one thing to try and make a habit out of is check your minimap as frequently as possible and you can start off the rule of thumb of look at the minimap when you're reloading your primary weapon. Obviously not quite as useful when you're using a machine gun since you don't reload it as frequently but it's a good time to do it because you can't really engage your opponent while reloading and usually if you're a decent player you've taken some cover anyway during the reload process so it's a great time to divert your attention from the screen to the minimap. Now you'll notice because I am using a 50 meter zoomed minimap, it gives me a lot of detail and precision in locating my enemies. However, it doesn't let me know what's going on further around the map. For the most part, I don't need this information as frequently, but what I have done is I've bound my normal map, my larger map, to one of my thumb buttons on my mouse. You can bind this to whatever you want. By default on PC, it's bound to the M button, but I use it frequently to bring up the larger map to let me know where the combat of the overall game is flowing. Going. Not as useful in, say, Team Deathmatch, but uh, in Conquest game modes or something like that, after you capture a point, bring up the big map using a thumb button real quick, and that'll let you know what's going on with the overall game, and you can rely on your minimap for locating close range threats. Now, just looking at the minimap in this clip here, you can see how telling it is, just showing me everything about what's going on on top of this skyscraper here. Battlefield is more reliant on the minimap than most other shooters. And this does help for clearing off large quantities of players on conquest points and stuff like that. Spotting and just showing up when you fire your weapon really does give away your position and it allows the other team to try and clear you out 
since in Battlefield, if one player is left alive, his entire squad can respawn on him. So it is important to be able to wipe out an entire squad in a certain area of the map. However, the same minimap rules still apply to game modes like Team Deathmatch, where the whole point of Team Deathmatch is to try and sneak around and outsmart your opponents, and when you get spotted on the minimap all the time, it becomes much more difficult to do that. Which is why I'm a big advocate for using the suppressor, especially on Team Deathmatch game modes, because it gives you such a huge advantage over your opponents. You do, however, want to be careful about relying too heavily on your minimap. In fact, it can get you killed a lot. Say you see an enemy spotted 50 meters away from your current location, and you go, oh, I'm just going to rush him. There's nobody between me and my enemy. And that can be a huge mistake. There can be any number of enemy players around your enemy or between you and the enemy that is spotted. So if you run out from behind cover to try and engage them, you could easily get gunned down by a whole lot of other players. And it gets me a lot too. Sometimes I rush in for a kill and don't anticipate the other enemies that just simply aren't spotted. When playing game modes like Team Deathmatch, where you frequently run into the same players over and over again, you want to make a mental note of how many players you're running into that have suppressed weapons, and then keep that in mind for the duration of the match, because if there's three, four, five enemies that are running suppressed weapons, that means you're not going to want to rely as heavily on your minimap because it's going to get you killed. There's also a lot of common sense things that people don't really seem to take advantage of with the minimap, and that's locating health packs and ammo packs. I use it all the time for trying to find ammo. I used to run around and try and find a support player and go ask him for ammo. That can be a lengthy process and sometimes never give you ammo because they don't know what you're trying to do. That's kind of been one of the long time issues with Battlefield. Hardline kind of fixed it with you being able to take ammo and health from your teammates, but in Battlefield 4, you're going to need to look on that minimap to find those health and ammo packs. It usually doesn't take too long, especially in like a TDM server or something like that. As long as somebody's playing support, they'll be dropping down those ammo packs somewhere, so you just gotta run and find them. Now something that I think all players should do is to join a game and be as conscious as possible about when you're looking at that minimap. Make sure you're doing it in between reloads. Make sure you're doing it when you're not in a tense situation or when you need to locate your enemies. Do it as frequently as possible, but when you're in a safe situation or a situation that you think is safe. Chances are you're not looking at that minimap frequently enough and being more conscious of it will slowly get you into the habit of looking more frequently. It can be hard when switching between other shooters too that don't rely as heavily on the minimap as Battlefield does. You have to use it more in Battlefield and it will improve your score and your effectiveness. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for my tips at when to look at the minimap and as you get better and better at looking at the minimap, you can start to look at it almost mid-combat or right after a kill and it'll usually save your life of somebody sneaking up behind you and stuff like that. So the better you get at it, the quicker you can glance at the minimap and know exactly what's going on around you. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.